So if you've been following this series, you'll have seen us test our real life Thor hammer against some cool stuff like this concrete block. But the two most requested hard items were Pycrete and Bowling Ball. Can any of these survive Thor's mighty hammer or will this be the death of Thor's Mjolnir? Let's find out. Brain Foo. Random stimulation for the brain. This is Pycrete. Legendarily hard, it's a frozen composite material, in this case water and sawdust, although cotton or newspaper make good alternatives. For this build, I opted for a simple wood shavings and water mix with an approximate ratio of 6 to 1 by weight. After a full soak of 24 hours, it was fully saturated, and after a further 3 days in the freezer below the ready meals, it was finally finished. Well, there you go guys, Thor's Hammer 1, Pycrete 0. Absolutely no marks, dents or scratches worth a mention. For a homemade hammer with DIY welding, she keeps on smashing. The Pycrete though, apart from the obvious split, put up remarkable resistance. Certainly a lot better than the concrete block. Ignoring the one or two small chips, it's in two definite pieces. And if there's any builders or bricklayers out there, you'll recognise this type of cut from when you chop bricks with a bowl stop. It's a really clean cut that's ripped through the fibres. And if you're the type of person that likes the smell of 7 inches of fresh wood, you'd love this. It didn't protect the half inch wooden base as well as I thought it might though, taking yet another bite out of the lawn. One thing's for sure though, Pycrete is remarkable and certainly better than solid oak. This, as I'm sure everybody knows, is a bowling ball, a 14 pound version in this case. As the more scientific amongst you will know, it's as hard as chuff, and definitely the hardest thing to test Thor's hammer so far. Because I don't want to lose too much energy or the bowling ball into the lawn, this is what I've come up with. On the bottom we have a half inch timber board, then two concrete blocks to spread the load, followed by these extremely hard engineering or blue bricks which I'll also use to try and trap the bowling ball. Could this kill me all near, or will this ball die trying? Here's bricks in your eye. The impact was again pretty devastating, making mincemeat of the blue bricks and the concrete blocks. Our hammer once more dodges death and it's pretty much unscathed. We've got scuffing from the contact with the surface of the bricks as you would imagine and a 1-2mm to two millimeter gouge where it struck something. This light mark though is pretty much the only visible damage to the bowling ball and that's caused by the glancing blow we managed rather than the full on impact. Great for a chip into the rough, but not good enough for our gang. Let's reload.
that was a good impact with pretty much all of the energy going straight into the ball. If you study the slow-mo, you can see the bottom disc of Thor's hammer shave off about two millimeters of the surface, and that's confirmed by this flat spot right here on the ball. We haven't managed to achieve any splits or cracks, so for a clear winner, we need more drop height. But I think with the extra height, achieving any reliable hit would be next to impossible. Apart from some slight decoration to the surface, once again, the hammer is triumphant, just leaving me with a clean-up job on the lawn before someone busts my balls. Meanwhile, if you're looking for an awesome channel to follow, go check out my friend Jerry Saval. On there, you'll find all sorts of cool builds and testing, like the Iron Man rocket launcher, fire tornado, full-size Fallout 4 bowling ball launcher, and power fist. Cool channel, great guy, and great content. Go and check him out. That brings this series of Thor's Hammer videos to a close, but if you have more cool suggestions, smash them in the comments below and I'll collect them up. Don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe, and I'll see you next time with a brand new video.